Good morning. Today I'm going to do 3.4, which is on radical equations. In this section, um, we're solving equations that involved one or more radicals. The first step in, so in solving an equation that contains a radical is to eliminate the radical from the equation. We will need to use the power rule for equality, which states if a equals b, then a to the nth power equals b to the nth power. So if we raise one side to a certain power, we have to raise the other side of the equation to that exact same power. Um, and this will um, give us solutions to the equation that are among the solutions to the new equation. You'll never lose solutions by squaring both sides, but we may introduce extraneous solutions. And these extraneous solutions are answers that look like answers, but when you plug them back into their original equation, they do not work. All right. And here are the steps for solving the radical equations. First thing you need to do is arrange your terms so one radical is isolated on one side of the equation all by itself. Then you're going to raise both powers, um, both sides of the equation by the nth power. And what I mean by nth power is just um, whatever that exponent is, okay? So we'll be using that power rule of equality. Then we're going to solve if this equation still contains a radical. You repeat step one and two, and then you're going to check your answers in the original equation. So let's take a look at this first one here. So um, step one, arrange terms so one radical is isolated. Well, this one's all by itself over there, so that's good. Raise both sides of the equation to the nth power. Okay, so whatever your index is right there. And remember, there's an implied 2. So I'm going to square this side, and I'm going to square this side. And I'll get a 2x plus 3 on the side equals 25. Okay, then solve. All right, so I'm solving for x. Move the 3 out of there, and I get a 2x that's gone equals 22. Divide both sides by 2. So I get x equals 11. All right, now I have to check this answer. So I have square root of 2 times the 11 plus 3. Okay, so that's going to give me a 22 plus 3, still underneath the radical. That gives me a 25, still under the radical, and that gives me a 5. 5 equals 5, true statement, so we're good. All right, that's it for that one. Okay, we're going to follow those same steps, so keep those handy just in case we need those. All right, this one here, let's take a look at that. Okay, isolate a radical. That is isolated. All right, raise it to the nth power. I'm going to square it because there's a 2 there. That'll give me 3x plus 4 equals 16. Then it says solve. Okay, solving for x. I'm going to move this over. I get 3x opposites equals 12. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. And so now I get x equals 4. Okay, let's check it. So if I put that in up here, they have 3 times that 4 plus 4, and our answer should be negative 4. Okay, so that gives me square root of 12 plus 4, gives me square root of 16, square root of 16 is 4. Is 4 negative 4? No, it is not. So this one is an extraneous answer. We came up with one answer, and it didn't work. So we have a no solution in this case. Okay, next one here. <clears throat> Isolate a radical all by itself. So this needs to be by itself. I need to move this. So let's move that over here. Get square root of 5x minus 1. That's gone. Equals 4. Okay, 
So now I am going to square both sides, raise it to the nth power. So I'll get a 5x minus 1 equals 16. Solve for um, x. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides, get a 5x opposite, so they're gone, equals 17, divide by 5, divide by 5. So now I have x equals 17 fifths. Okay, it's not going to be fun, but we have to check it. So here we go. I have 5 times 17 fifths plus, oh, we got a minus 1 in there, plus 3 equals 7. Okay, those guys do cancel out. Then I get the 17 minus 1 gives me 16. Square root of 16 is 4 plus the 3 over here gives me 7. 7 equals 7, so we're good. Now notice here, you know, you're like, well, how come this one worked and that one didn't? When we have a square root up there, um, think about that. Square root equaling a negative number. Okay, the original equation has no real solutions because a principal square root cannot have a negative answer. Remember when we use that um, radical sign, our answer can only be positive. Okay, let's take a look at this next one here. All right, isolate a radical. It's isolated over here, and that's fine. Raise it to the nth power. So we're going to square both sides. Now, the trick here is you have to square the whole side, not each and in a, every individual term. And that really means x plus 5 times x plus 5, like that, equals, and this will be x plus 7. Okay, when I FOIL that out, I'll get an x squared plus 10x plus 25. So, you know, I FOILed and combined there. All right, since I have an x squared, I need to get everything on one side equaling 0. So I'm going to subtract an x, and I'm going to subtract a 7. Okay, so I'll get an x squared plus 9x, um, and that is 18 equals zero. Then, since it's a square and we're solving, we got to factor that. And that one, using the zero property, will give me a negative six. That one gives me a negative three. Okay, so I need to take these up here and check them. Negative 6 plus 5. Well, just looking at that, that gives me a negative 1 on this whole side. I can't have that principal square root over here equaling a negative number. So that one does not work. Okay, let's try the next one. So negative 3 plus 5. When I add those guys together, that gives me a positive 2. So we're that one's still in play. Okay, so positive 2. Then over here... I'll have a negative 3 plus 7, which gives me a square root of 4, which is 2. 2 equals 2. That one works. So we came up with two answers in this case. One of them was extraneous, and the other one actually does work. All right, next problem. So um, isolate a radical. That one's isolated, so we're good to go. Then raise both sides to the nth power. So I'm going to square both sides here. And remember, that really means square root of x minus 3 times square root of x minus 3. You can write it like that. Okay, so this side's going to give me x minus 3. And then here, when I do that, that gives me an x. That gives me minus 3 square root of x. That one gives me minus 3 square root of x. And then I have um, plus 9. Okay, combine like terms x minus 3 equals, that's x minus 3 square root, minus 6 square root of x plus 9. Okay, so we still have a square root in here, so I need to go back to square 1, where we have a radical all by itself on one side. So I'm going to try to get this on one side, and I'm going to move those two to the other side. So I'm going to subtract x, subtract 9. 
opposite, so they're gone. So negative 12 equals opposites, they're gone. Negative 6 square root of x, opposites, they're gone. Okay, so now to make it easy on myself, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6. I'll give myself 2 equals square root of x. Okay, so we finally have that square root radical all by itself on one side. So step two says raise both sides to the nth power. So I'll have four equals x. And there you go. And we do have to check this. Okay, so that'll give me four minus three. So that gives me a one square root of one is one. Okay, equals square root of 4 minus a 3. So f square root of 4 is a 2 minus 3. 2 minus 3 gives me a negative 1. Does 1 equal negative 1? No. Okay, so we came up with one solution. It didn't work. So that's a no solution. All right, this next one here, oh, it is a bear of a problem, but we're going to do it. Okay. So... Isolated radical. I'm going to keep this one all by itself and move this one over here. So when I do that, it's going to become minus square root of 3x plus 4, like that. Okay, so I move that to the other side over here. Then we are going to square both sides. Okay, so that's going to give me a 5x plus 6 over here equals. And then remember that one there means... Um, let's just write it out the long way. 2 minus square root of 3x plus 4 times 2 minus square root of 3x plus 4. Okay, let's boil that out now. That gives me a 4. That gives me a minus 2 square root of 3x plus 4. Do this one. That's going to give me a minus 2. So... Let's just add that here and say that this one here is now a four because we got a minus two and when we do it again, we'll have another minus two. So that's gonna be a minus four right there. And then when I do this one times this one, negative and negative is gonna give me a positive. And then I'll ha end up with two of these underneath the radical. So that's gonna give me a three X plus four. Okay, then we still have this. All right, we have a radical still in here, so I need to combine and move everything over there. So let's do that. Let's combine these. If I do that four and the four there, let's call that an eight, right? And I'll get just get rid of that one. All right, so let's subtract. Well, actually, let's just do it the long way. Plus 3x plus 8. Okay, let's subtract 8, subtract 8, subtract 3x, subtract 3x. All right, so that's going to give me a 2x. This one here will give me a minus 2 equals negative 4 square root of 3x plus 4. Opposites, opposites. Okay, and the last problem what I did was I subtracted. I mean, divided by that negative 4. In this case, I'm not going to do it because I have, um, it'll give me fractions over here, and I really don't want to work with fractions, okay? But I do notice that I could factor a 2 out of this, or let's do, just divide both sides by 2, okay? So then I'll get an x minus 1 equals a negative 2 square root of 3x plus 4. Make it a little bit easier on ourselves. Okay, so we got this all isolated on one side now. We reduced it down, make it easy. So now we're going to square both sides. Remember that means this right there. So that's going to give me an x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals... Now, here's the trick on this one. You have to square all of this here. So if you square that negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2 gives me a positive 4. And then when I square this, I'll get a 3x plus 4. 
and you have to distribute that 4 to everything inside there. So you get x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 12x plus 16. All right, I got an x squared, so I need everything on one side equaling 0. So I'm going to subtract 12x, and I'm going to subtract 16. And I get x squared minus 14x minus 15 equals 0. Okay, factor it now. Oops, that's a 15. So minus 15 and a plus 1, that one will give me a 15. That one gives me a negative 1 using the 0 factor property. Okay, so we have to go back up here to our original and check that. So if I have the square root of 5... Um, times 15 plus the 6, okay, then plus square root of 3 times the 15 plus 4. That's going to equal 2, and we'll get to that. All right, so 5 times 15, oh shoot, let me get my calculator. That's 75, right? 75 plus 6 gives me 81 square root. Oh, those are still under there. Square root of 81 gives me a 9. Well, if I take that 9 and I add something to it, which has to be positive because it's the principal square root, am I going to get 2? No. So that one does not work. All right, let's try the second one now. So 5 times negative 1 plus 6 plus square root of, what is that, 3 times the negative 1 plus 4. Okay, so that gives me a negative 5 plus 6, which gives me a 1. Square root of 1 is 1. That gives me a 3, negative 3 plus 4, which is a 1, so square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 equals 2. That's what it was supposed to equal. So negative 1 worked. 15 was an extraneous. All right, so let's do a few random ones here. We can use other powers besides just squares. I mean, it'll work with cubes, fourth powers, fifth powers, whatever the nth power is. And nth means just whatever your index is, okay? So let's say I have that cube there. Isolate it, okay, so we isolate, then um, raise it to the nth power. So cube both sides, that'll give me an x minus one equals eight. Solve for x now. So add one, add one, x equals nine. Okay, now these you do not have to um, check if it is an odd index up here. Those answers are always going to work. It is nice that um, you check, especially if it's on a test or something, but um, you do not have to check. It will not produce an extraneous answer if it, you have an odd power there. Okay, isolate a radical. It's isolated. Raise it to the nth power. So cube both sides. That gives me a 2x plus 5 on that side. This side gives me a 6x plus 1. Okay, solve for x. So I'm going to move the 6 minus 6x. I'm going to move the 5 minus 5. Oops, I should put that there too. So that gives me a negative 4x. Opposite's gone. Equal sign. Opposite's gone. Gives me a negative 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. And that gives me an x equals one. All right. Next one, same rules apply. Get this on one side all by itself. Move this to the other side. So I'm going to say minus one over here. Okay. Raise it to the nth power. So that gives me an x plus one equals a negative one. Move that over. We're solving for x x equals negative 2. And there you go. Okay, next one. Now notice we have uh, even up here, so we do have to check that. So raise both 
sides to the fourth power. So I'll have um, x plus 8 equals over here 2x. Um, I'm going to move that x and I will get 8 equals an x. Okay, and if I check that, 8 plus 8 gives me 16. Um, square root of 16 is 4, so I'll get a 4 there. If I put an 8 in here, I'll get a 16. Um, fourth root, oh, just a second, that's not square root, that's um, fourth root. Okay, so if I have the fourth root of 16, that's a 2. And if I have the fourth root, and if I put that in there again, that will give me a 2. 2, okay, so 2 equals 2. We're good. Last one here, so isolate it. So I'll have fourth root of 2x minus 5 equals a negative 4. Now here, that's a even number. I can't have a principal square root equally negative, so I know that this one will be no solution. All right, hope you enjoyed. Bye.